Hello everyone, thank you all for coming. I'm Sina, an industrial engineer and management scientist here at Northwestern. And today, I'm so excited to tell you about my work with Northwestern Memorial Hospital to make patient experience of waiting better in an emergency room. How many of you have ever been in an emergency room before? As a patient, as a family member? Fortunately, uh, unfortunately, a good number of you. Uh, and I guess that wasn't the best experience of your life, if it wasn't the worst, right? Unfortunately, I had a bad experience in the emergency room before. Uh, two years ago, I injured my knee in a soccer game, and I had to go to an emergency room. And I remember I was waiting for hours and hours to see the doctor. I was in pain, I was so anxious, and there was no way for me to get any information on how long I need to wait to see the doctor. So many people have uh, a similar experience. Actually, let's look at, look at some stats. 136 million people visit ERs annually in the United States. And shockingly, more than 65% of them have to wait more than two hours to see the doctor. This excessive wait time make patients dissatisfied and they may leave the emergency room. And this is a huge risk to their health. Unfortunately, due to the limited number of beds, the limited number of resources in emergency room, we cannot completely remove the waiting times. But at least we can make the experience of waiting better. But the question is how? This is what I'm doing in my research. With Northwestern Memorial Hospital staff, doctors and nurses, we developed an application that gets patients' information, characteristics information, and visit information, and predicts the time a patient, an individual patient, will need to wait to see a doctor. The picture that you see right over here is the test version that is used by staff for quality improvement purposes. The patient version is under construction, and we hope to release it soon. But you might ask, how does it work? So taking historical data, thousands and thousands of medical records of patients from uh, before, using some statistical analysis method, we try to find the most effective factors that affect the prediction of the wait time. Let me show you three factors that we found that has the most significant contribution to your wait time in emergency room. So the first one is time of day. This is a graph of the average wait time of patients by arrival hours, where zero is midnight throughout the whole day. If you take a closer look at the average wait time, you see this clear difference between the wait time of patients in the morning and in the afternoon. If you come in the morning, you're gonna wait less than if you're coming in the afternoon. So this is important to take into account. Also, you can look at this graph for day of the week. If you look at from Monday to Saturday and Sunday, you still see that difference between mornings and afternoons, but also take, for example, Monday and Saturday and Sunday, you see that the graph is a little bit different. Actually, on Saturday and Sunday, the wait time shifted down comparing to Monday. So, if you get to choose when to get sick, get sick on Saturday mornings rather than Monday afternoons. And last but not least is a factor called ESI level. ESI stands for Emergency Severity Index. When you get to an emergency room, there's a lady like this lady, which is called triage nurse, and she's supposed to examine you how sick you are. And she assigned you to either of these categories from one to five, where one is the most severe, most time-taking uh, patient, and uh, five is the less severe, less urgent, uh, less urgent category. So we saw that if you are a trauma case, which is category one, you're gonna wait much less than if you have ankle pain and you definitely gonna uh, wait less. So we have an application that predicts wait times, but wait a minute, we wanted to improve patients' experience of waiting. Thus, giving this information about wait times using this application actually improves this experience of waiting so the answer to this question is yes. Literature of uh, patient satisfaction and the hospital's uh, satisfaction survey 
show that there are so many uh, factors affecting patients' uh, satisfaction. But the most important factor is the perceived wait time. Not the actual one, the perceived wait time, the amount of time patients perceive as the wait time, that think that they're waiting. So if we can change the perception of the wait time, we can change the satisfactions of patients and improve the satisfaction, but how? So case studies from other service systems like call centers, like airlines, like restaurants shows that if you announce the wait, this reduces patient anxiety and this improves waiting experience. Basically, you give them some information about the wait time, this changes their perception of the wait time, and they feel happier. This is what we expect to see in hospital at least. What's next? So we are still not sure what is the best format to announce the delays to make patients more satisfied. Should we give them the average wait time? Should we give them the uh, maximum accepted wait time? Uh, should we give them the time interval, like you have to wait to 20 to one hour? Which one works the best? So to answer this question, we are running an experiment at Northwestern Memorial Hospital to test the impact of this different wait time announcement scenarios on patient satisfaction. We basically give patients who are coming into the hospital some sort of delay information, and at the very end, we ask them to evaluate their waiting experience. So hopefully, if this experiment works out, we can prove the concept, and patients, every single patient, in all the emergency room all around the world, will be feeling happier, at least by knowing how much time they need to wait using our application. Let's hope for that day. Thank you so much.